All right, one of my favorite units in AP Environmental Science, uh, Earth Systems. So if we were to marry two of these geologic activities together, earthquakes are a direct result of the movement of plates and their contact with each other. Volcanic eruptions happen when that molten magma that's beneath the Earth's crust is released into the atmosphere. And sometimes these two events are observed together, most often along the plate boundaries where a lot of the tectonic activity is really high. So you can see here in this diagram where we see a lot of really high tectonic activity in which earthquake locations and volcanic eruptions form a circle, um, a circle of tectonic activity. We actually call this the ring of fire and that you know borders the Pacific Ocean. And so a ring of fire cir circles the Pacific Ocean along these plate boundaries. And other zones of seismic activity and volcanic activity um, do occur elsewhere and they're often over hot spots and you can also see those hot spots in the, act in the actual map too. Right there, uh, there's a lot of them over here. You know, even a moderate amount of earth movement can be basically disastrous. Moderate earthquakes, which we define those on uh, the Richter scale as 5, 5.9, uh, lead to a collapse of all kinds of structures, buildings, fires, uh, contaminates water supplies, ruptures dams, causes a lot of death. Uh, the loss of life is is really more of a result of the proximity of where uh, people are to the actual epicenter of the earthquake. In 2008, a magnitude of 7.9 earthquake in the southwest region uh, near China killed more than 69,000 people. And the epicenter was near a populated area where many buildings were probably not built to withstand such large earthquakes. And in 2010, a magnitude 7.0 earthquake um, in Haiti killed more than 200,000 people. And many of the victims were just trapped underneath collapsed buildings. You know, part of AP environmental science isn't always the science about how this works. But you need to be also be aware of the environmental, the economic, and the social, and even ecological impacts of these types of things. Like ecological impacts um, on the biotic life, like volcanic activity can destroy plant life, and as lava flows, it establishes new ecosystems. And environmental impacts would be like um, biotic and, and abiotic that I can think of. You know, volcanic activity spews all this particulate matter and sulfur dioxide into the air, and as it erupts, it basically decreases air quality, making it difficult for animals to breathe. Uh, socially, the impacts on people, earthquakes can just be disastrous to humans, especially in populated areas, and many people have been killed just due to collapsed structure. Um, economically, this impacts nations. Earthquakes can cause major structural damages to buildings and interrupt both uh, transportation and communication networks, which are vital to uh, business, hospitals, and you know, and pretty much everything else. And so repairing or rebuilding these types of things is very expensive. So entire economies have been destroyed due to these, um, that, these activities. And so, you know, just be advised that money and jobs, things like that should be included, uh, you know, when you're contemplating, uh, you know, not just the rock cycle. Speaking of the rock cycle, <laughs> this is a geological um, cycle governing the constant formation, even alteration and destruction of rock material that results as a result from tectonics, um, even weathering and also erosion, erosion, amongst some other things. And so the rock cycle is the slowest out of all Earth's cycles. There are three major ways that rock um, on Earth's surface can conform, and this leads to three types of rock. Uh, so the formation and the type of rock are that's used interchangeably. So um, directly from molten magma, we call that igneous rock. Um, compression of sediments from sediments together, we call that sedimentary rock. And then exposure to high temperatures and pressures, we call that metamorphic rock.
A rock cycle is slow, but it's continuous, and it forms new rock and breaks down old rock consistently and constantly. So the three types of rocks are created in the rock cycle. The igneous is formed from the magma, sedimentary from the compression of sediments, and the metamorphic created from when rocks are subjected to high pressures and temperatures. Rock is the substrate of the lithosphere, and it's composed of you know, one or more or plus minerals. And minerals are solid chemical substances um, with uniform and even off, often like crystalline, like we've talked about before, structures that form under specific temperatures and pressure. And they usually form compounds. Um, but, you know, they also may be composed of a single element too, if you think about it, like silver and gold come to mind. Igneous rocks are formed directly from magma, and they're classified as by their chemical no. composition. They're either basaltic or granitic, and um, by their mode of formation, can also be intrusive or extrusive. Basaltic rocks is this dark colored rock that contains minerals with a high concentration of iron, magnesium, and calcium. And it is the dominant type of rock on the Earth's crust and also on the oceanic plates. Granitic rock is a lighter colored rock and it's made up of minerals like felspar, mica, quartz, uh, contains elements like silicon, aluminum, potassium, and calcium. And it's the dominant rock type in the crust of continental plates. So when granitic rock breaks down uh, due to weathering, it forms sand. So soils that form from this granitic type rock, they tend to be more porous um, and permeable. They allow more uh, water through than these um, basaltic rocks. But they're both types of rocks that can make really, really fertile soil. So intrusive igneous rock forms within the earth as magma rises up, cools, and um, in a place underground. And extrusive igneous rock forms when magma cools above earth's surface, such as um, when it's like ejected from a volcano or released by sea, f sea floor spreading. So extrusive rock cools really quickly. Uh, so their minerals have a little more time to expand into like large individual quartz crystal looking types of things um, and the result of this fine uh, fine smooth type of rock um, one of them is obsidian and if you know that looks like it's a really black deep black shiny type of, of rock but both extrusive and intrusive rocks can be um, either granitic or basaltic in their composition and so the formation of igneous rock often brings to the surface that rare elements and um, metals that humans find economically valuable and beautiful, like, um, like lanthium, like we described earlier here in this presentation. When rock cools, it is subject to stress, and that causes it to break apart. And the, that can occur when rock cools, and we call that fractures. And they can occur in all types of rock, really. But water from the surface of Earth running through these types of fractures may dissolve uh, valuable metals, which may precipitate out of the fractures directly into uh, concentrated uh, veins, we call deposits, or, um, or even veins. And so these, these veins are where we find sources of precious metals like gold, silver, um, and these ores also that contain other rare things like uh, Copper comes to mind, um, and tantalum, and these rare things that, you know, they're electronic components inside of your cell phone. Sedimentary rock forms when sediments like um, mud and sand and gravels, when they're compressed by overlaying sediments. And this rock formation also occurs over long periods of time, when, when environments like um, sand dunes, and mud flats like lake beds or even other areas that are prone to landslides over long periods of time when they're buried and um, and this overlaying materials create this intense pressure so the resulting rock may be uniform in composition like sandstone and mudstone that are formed from ancient oceanic or lake environments 
Now, alternatively, uh, they may be highly heterogeneous and a conglomerate, a conglomerate of all things together. Um, rocks form from like mixed cobbles and gravels and sand. Sedimentary rock holds the fossil record that provides a window into our past. When layers of sediment containing plants and animals and remains have been compressed over lots and lots of time, eons even, those organic materials, they may have been preserved in those layers of sedimentary rock. Metamorphic rocks are formed when sedimentary rocks and igneous rocks and even other metamorphic rocks, they're subjected to high temperatures and pressure. And these pressures that occur uh, to form more, me more me I'm sorry, <laughs> metamorphic rock cause profound physical and chemical changes in that rock. And these pressures can be exerted by, you know, overlaying rock layers um, or by like a tectonic process or a continental collision. Um, anything that causes like extreme pressure or distortion. Metamorphic rock includes things like slate, uh, marble, uh, different types of coal. And so just from that list alone, you can, you can see that this type of rock has had a real big impact on human activity and human civilizations. I mean, we basically make our house, houses and, <laughs> and countertops and heat our homes with this type of rock.